This morning on The Dish, Steve McHugh of the restaurant Cured. The San Antonio eatery is specializing in charcuterie. It's part of a next mex wave of diversifying cuisines in the Texas city. But the name of the restaurant signifies a whole lot more to me, more than me, McHugh, uh, as you're about to find out. Inside Chef Steve McHugh's San Antonio restaurant, diners are greeted by a massive humidity controlled meat locker known as the Shark Tank. The charcuterie inside serves as McHugh's signature dish and a philosophy for honoring the farmers whose livestock it depends on. We made a commitment early on that we were going to purchase entire animals and then from there figure out what the heck we were going to do with it. Does that really sell? Oh, yeah. For probably about 95% of the people. Sometimes people walk in and go, I didn't need to see that. <laughs> <laughs> but we weren't going to hide it in the back. We really wanted to just say, this is what you get. This is what it is. Is this pork right here? Yeah, that's pork. This the tank is filled with various meats and salamis in different stages of curing or salting. So that's an inside round in Italian. They call it brazola. Okay. And it's it's dried beef. The length of the curing process is determined by size. Oh, the fun yeah. Stuff oh. Here. McHugh says one ham can take about two years. And the aroma yeah. just kind of comes out at you. Yeah, it's like walking into a little ham shop in Italy, you know, <laughs> you just get that, that funk. We're definitely not trying to weird people out. We're not trying to freak them out. This is stuff people have been doing for centuries. It's come in, have a good time, enjoy some cured meats. Um, and be a little adventurous. Exactly, yeah. This is a typical uh, charcuterie platter. We have about 22 to 25 different items they can choose from, and it just depends on what they want to try. This is probably our top seller right here. It's our duck ham. We have a chicken sausage here, so it's not just oh, it's not just pork. I gotta try that. The platter comes with local cheeses, house pickled veggies, and mustards. Should I have some of this? Yeah. Yep. Even the garnishes are beautifully delicious. Put one of them pretty little flowers on there. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> If McHugh seems comfortable with a farm-to-table approach, it's because he grew up that way. His parents, both working professionals, raised their seven boys on a dairy farm in Wisconsin. I really, in a lot of ways, think they bought it to keep us out of trouble. But at the same time, it was a way for them to provide food to said family. McHugh worked as a short order cook in high school, but went to college on a scholarship to study the saxophone. I wasn't the best student in high school, and so then I was a, not the best student in college, sitting in a lecture hall all day learning about music theory, and you know, I just, I didn't want to do it. So I ended up going to culinary school, and I think it was the first time in my life that I was like, top of my class in anything. It was the first time that... That feels good. It felt really it? good, and it was like making music, but with food or on a plate. After graduating from the Culinary Institute of America, McHugh improvised his way to New Orleans. New Orleans was amazing because it was like going to another country in the mid-90s, and that's what it felt like. It felt like I'd left the United States and was in a totally different place. He spent 14 years working for some of the biggest restaurateurs in the Big Easy. Then he was asked to help open a restaurant in San Antonio. When did you decide, I'm going to strike out on my own? Well, a lot of things happened, but mo uh, the biggest thing that happened was when I got sick. In 2009, McHugh didn't know he was living with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I was you know, leaving sick every day and just cutting out and, you know, telling my general manager, I said, I'll be back tomorrow, I just got to get some sleep. And I went to probably three or four different doctors and, you know, I got, you have the flu, you sent me to see an ear, nose and throat specialist and they said, we can't figure anything out. We think maybe you're allergic to something. So you were misdiagnosed. Yeah, several over times. and over again. Probably about a three month period of just feeling really bad. It was an allergist who suggested the CT scan that revealed a baseball-sized tumor in his chest. But Steve and his wife, Sylvia, were determined not to let it stop them. How do you fight the cancer and then pick up your family and start over? Yeah, that was hard. We almost didn't. And I don't even remember who said it. It was just somebody in my oncologist's office there in New Orleans. Nobody told you to stop living your life. And that was a moment where I said, you're right. We're going to move to San Antonio and we're going to go open that restaurant and we're going to, you know, continue to live life the way we'd planned it. All right, it's rock and roll. We're going to be busy, man. After he was cured of the cancer, he had a smaller problem to solve, naming his very own restaurant. We just could not figure it out, but we knew it was important. We just, we really wanted it to, to have meaning. And a friend of mine uh, suggested we hire a branding company to help us. Really? <laughs> 
believe it or not. <laughs> you hired someone to come up with this? Yes, I'm serious. And they listened to what we were trying to do with the restaurant, and they listened to my story, and they came up with the name like that. Like that? that. Yeah. <laughs> and how much and, did you drop one? Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to tell me. But it seems yeah. so obvious. Yeah, and I wish I could take credit for it, <laughs> but I can't. Since opening in 2013, Cured has been a James Beard Award finalist four times, including the past three years. He's currently working on a cookbook. We haven't come up with a name yet. We're working on the name of the book. Um, it Hire might... somebody for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody's eating a name, boo. So right. as long as you got exactly. the, the food tastes yeah. good, yeah. Exactly. you're golden. You got it. <laughs> Thank you. And it does. And the great thing, as you can see, is Michelle brought all the food back for us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Looks Kudos. really good. Kudos. We'll have to visit. Kudos to producer Greg Marmon on that one. Yes. 2-0. Greg, Greg did a have great job. Good Greg. stuff.